Women in Saudi Arabia equals of a goat. Goats are le on level with men in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> I'm going to get killed, aren't I? Take me, sweet dad! Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Brain Blaze. I am your revered host, sometimes revered, sometimes hated, Simon. And welcome, welcome, what happens here? Danny writes me a script, I'm gonna read it. You're gonna watch along and then Sam, no, Sam's gonna edit the memes and do the edit first. Then you're gonna watch along, which is what you're doing right now, weird. Let's crack on because today, today we're talking about I have no idea what. Let me look over here. The most shocking examples of fake news. That sounds like a title I came up with. That sounds like something I like people will kick on that. They'll click on it so hard! I'm into that shit! A minute silence, please. I don't usually like to begin on such a somber note, but I think it's important that we take a moment to remember the victims of the Bowling Green Massacre. Danny, is this another one of those scripts where you, you, you involve lots of death? We finished one the other day and it was like, and then they were horribly killed. And I'm like, Danny, no, why? And by the other day, I mean I recorded about five minutes before I recorded this. I don't mean the infamous Rotham Bowling Green Massacre of 77, in which a group of ten pensioners were mowed down by a pack of feral teenagers riding stolen combine harvesters on the local Bowling Green. That sounds like a made-up story, Danny. Danny! I mean, the 2010 massacre in Bowling Green, Kentucky, in which countless brave U.S. soldiers lost their lives in a brutal attack masterminded by two radicalized Iraqis who had recently spent time refining their terrorism skills in the Middle East before returning to the U.S. to carry out the mindless slaughter. Danny, Danny, why is why has death become a part of your script so much lately? It's like everyone, I feel like you're about to be like, yeah, yeah, no, just kidding. This is a light-hearted brain blaze script, and then it's like, and then the terrorists executed all the prisoners, and it's like, Danny, no, Danny, why? Danny, Danny, get some help. It's hard to get a handle on just how many innocent lives were lost that day because the media curiously turned a bit of a blind eye to it all, but a prominent wise figure was later kind enough to remind us all of this news blackout in 2017. Wait, 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 this never happened, did it? Because the title's called Fake News. I was like, I've never heard about this. How did these radicalized Iraqis get into a random base in Kentucky and kill people? This makes no sense. And of course it doesn't make sense because it's not real. Kellyanne Conway, the senior advisor to then-President Trump, was appearing on television to justify Trump's new travel and immigration ban on seven Muslim-majority countries. Kellyanne reminded us that the soldiers who lost their lives in the 2010 Bowling Green Massacre, how the media completely ignored it, and the media's further reticence to cover President Obama's subsequent decision to slap a six-month ban on the government's Iraqi refugee program. Kellyanne's argument was that Trump was doing something pretty similar to Obama, yet nobody reported it or cared when Obama did it. I get the feeling, old Kelly, old Kelster, because it never happened and Obama did no such thing. Either, either, let me hope that you just read about this on Facebook and it's fake and you're doing, you know, you're just reporting what you read. Because the other option of you making this up is insane and very immoral and also people are definitely gonna fact check you realize you're lying and it's gonna be a very bad look but there was a very good reason why the media didn't report on the bowling green massacre and that's because it never happened it is true that two iraqi men living in bowling green were arrested in 2011 but they certainly never carried out or even plotted a domestic terrorist attack they'd been ensnared in an fbi sting in which the duo had agreed to help provide weapons and money to terrorists over in iraq different place, very far away. Nobody in Bowling Green ever received so much as a paper cut and the Iraqi men are now serving life sentences for federal terrorism offenses. Don't do terrorism offenses. It's like, what did you do? Yeah, I bought a gun for my mates in Iraq. Life in prison. Terrorism is real serious business. Don't do it. You've been warned. Believe it or not, jail right away. Owens oh, Obama didn't then impose a six-month ban on the Iraqi refugee program either. His response was to temporarily tighten up the background checks and screening procedures for Iraqi refugees entering the United States. The Democrats were naturally annoyed that Kellyanne had resorted to making up terrorist attacks and rewriting history to make her point and defend her president. Why the fuck do you do that? You must know. You must know that you're going to get caught. Am I going to get upbeat? Oh, Facebook users started marking themselves safe from the Bowling Green Massacre. Spoof vigils for the imaginary victims were held in Kentucky and New York. Entrepreneurial souls started selling t-shirts bearing the slogan, I survived the Bowling Green Massacre. Gives me an idea for something new in the Brain Blaze store, doesn't it? Doesn't it, capitalist fact boy? 
And my favorite reaction came from TV writer Justin Shanes, who tweeted, I'm finding these Bowling Green Massacre jokes to be a little too soon. Out of respect, we should wait until it takes place. <laughs> it's good. It's very good. Now Kellyanne was quick to rectify her mistake the following day with a lame half-assed apology in which she claimed that she misspoke. The fuck? Misspe misspeaking is when, you know, George Bush says about the, he's, you know, he's given a speech about Putin's invasion of Ukraine and he accidentally says Iraq. That's misspeaking. Making up a story, Kellyanne, is what we call a f***ing lie. Allegedly. She tried to make out that she'd accidentally replaced her intended phrase, Bowling Green Terrorists, with Bowling Green Massacre. That might have been a bit more believable if she hadn't given no less than three separate interviews over the pre- Ah, <laughs> no! Over the previous two days in which she specifically mentioned the loss of innocent lives in a Bowling Green massacre, which was covered up by the media, you must be sh me. Kellyanne was no stranger to controversy, having earlier baffled the whole world with her defense of White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer's overinflated claim that President Trump had managed to attract the biggest inauguration crowd in history. In fact, Trump only pulled in a third of the crowd that Obama's inauguration had attracted in 2009 which is embarrassing. No one would know that statistic, Trump. No one would know it. If you hadn't said it was the biggest ever, and then people looked into it and were like, oh, it was much less successful than Obama's. Much less. Like, you got 33% of the people that Obama got. That's bad. It's real bad. No one would know that if you hadn't claimed something. No one would care. And here we are. Kellyanne claimed that Sean hadn't lied about this. It simply presented alternative facts. Kellyanne! You need to understand what lying is. It seems like you just don't understand lying. Alternative facts are lies, Kellyanne. What the f***? And alternative facts might be another creative way of describing fake. And alternative facts might be another way of creating... And alternative facts might be another creative way of describing fake news, which now seems to encompass intentionally deceptive fabrication, slight spins on the truth, and misunderstood satire, and blissful ignorance of what the hell you're meant to be talking about. And although oh, we might consider fake news to be a modern phenomenon which rose from the darker side of the internet, it turns out people have been spreading false information for thousands of years. Doesn't surprise me at all. All of this sh** that we think is new, it's always like, people have been pieces of sh** forever. The news has been a piece of sh** forever. It's just now it's so much more visceral because it's right there on our phones and in our hands and on our computers all the time. But it's always been sh**. Yellow journalism and all that stuff was a thing 100 years ago. People were making up. History was basically made up thousands of years ago. Like Herodotus, big, famous, ancient historian. He wrote about the sh** happened like hundreds of years later and just elaborated on it. Like, not as in did research and talk to people and elaborate on just made up to make it more interesting it's always been this shit. yesterday's headlines one of the very earliest recorded victims of a fake news campaign was julius caesar i told you i told you julius caesar's writer man mark antony following caesar's assassination in 44 bc the situation in the dying days of the roman republic was pretty messy with power being divided between the second triumvirate a three-man dictatorship made up of mark antony who was assigned to the eastern provinces of rome including egypt former general lepidus who was given africa to rule and caesar's adopted son octavian who stayed in rome to keep an eye on things at home by 31 BC, Lepidus had been sidelined from the picture and forced into early retirement. He should count himself lucky, it's Rome. <laughs> Like, he didn't get killed, he didn't get mauled by bears. But tensions were now really beginning to simmer between Antony and Octavian, who were both keen to seize absolute power over a potential new Roman Empire. It was a situation not helped by the fact that Antony was married to Octavian's sister, yet he had now shacked up with Cleopatra, who was still fighting to keep Egypt independent from Rome. Uh-oh, don't do that! Are you flirting with my sister? Yes, I am! Do you want to die? Yes, I do! And we all know how this story ends. Take me, sweet dad! They'd even gone as far and had three sprogs together. Antony ruled the east while Octavian ruled the west. But Octavian, he wanted it all. And he was determined to soil the reputation of Antony, who remained a popular figure with the soldiers. These days, Octavian would probably just go to Twitter and make an allegation that Antony bummed dogs at the weekends. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Hashtag bumming dogs hashtag octavian i don't know how hashtags work <laughs> i don't think i've ever used a hashtag on twitter i don't know it uh, for someone who's like supposed to be good at social media you know like youtube sort of social media someone who's supposed to be good at this i'm so shit. 
I, I don't, I've never used a hashtag. Pretty certain. Maybe someone could go through my old tweets. Maybe there was a hashtag I used. Don't remember it at all. Uh, even when cocaine was trending, I didn't use it. Weird. Double click. Double click. But in the days before social media, Octavian resorted to distributing coins and poetry, which painted Andrew as a disloyal puppet of Cleopatra. The coins included short slogans, which accused Antony of being a womanizing drunk who was unfit to rule. <laughs> Collect them all. To be fair, the womanizing bit might have been bang on the money. Octavian perhaps had the bigger advantage as he was still in Rome and held more direct influence over Rome and the Senate in comparison to Antony, who was building sandcastles with Cleo. And Octavian's masterstroke was to get his hands on Antony's alleged last will and testament and read it aloud to the Senate House as evidence that Antony was a dirty, dirty traitor. You were my brother, Anakin! I loved you. It's very possible that the will was a tissue of lies cooked up by Octavian to discredit Antony. Historians are still arguing about this today. But whether it was legitimate or a forgery, as I put my last five gold coins on the latter, the effect was electric. It was as if the will had been perfectly designed to play into the prejudices of the Romans who were suspicious of the East of powerful women and of pyramids. Did no one ask whether this thing was actually real? Were they like, this looks good, Octavian? Look at that prick, Antony. I can't believe it'd be such a dirty traitor. And Octavian's like, yeah, 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 I definitely didn't write this. <laughs> what a bell. Bell, 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 and bell, 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 and it declared that all of Antony's wealth would be left to Cleo and the kids, and that he wished to be buried in the mausoleum of the Ptolemaic kings in Alexandria. Dirty traitor! This was seen as proof that Antony had betrayed his country and his people and fallen under the spell of the Egyptian sorceress. The outraged Senate immediately stripped Antony of his legal right to command the Roman legions, and Octavian was given an excuse to start a civil war. He chickened out of declaring Antony as the enemy as he feared alienation from Antony's devoted followers, but instead he declared war on Cleopatra and Egypt, and it was a war that Octavian was destined to win going on to rule the new Roman Empire for four prosperous decades, largely on the strength of a successful smear campaign. Octavian did it, didn't he? You can't help but be sort of impressed by Octavian. Bit of a legend, really. Traitorous to, to Antony legend, and he built his whole career on lies. But still. But still. Batman, look at the size of those balls! As for Antony, after he was defeated in the Battle of Actium, he committed suicide upon hearing the news that his beloved Cleopatra had done the same. Although we don't know where exactly he got this news from, the final killer blow to Antony's story is that Cleopatra had actually been alive and well and awaiting for a return of Romeo and Juliet, isn't it? Oh no! Fake news of plagues poor old Antony right up until his dying breath. Poor old Antony. Poor old Antony. Saudi Arabian scientists upgrade women to mammals. Here's an example of how satire can take on a life of its own when the punchline flies way over the head of the masses. In 2016, the satirical news website World News Daily Report published a piece which joked that Saudi Arabian scientists attending that year's World Government Summit had announced that the women of Saudi Arabia were finally getting upgraded to mammal status. <laughs> Did they actually think this was real? Did someone in Saudi Arabia did be like, what the fuck? We're not doing that. Get them back in the kitchen right now. And I know in Saudi Arabia, it's worse than that. It's Saudi Arabia. This was apparently a giantly fought for women's rights in a country which had previously viewed women as property sharing the same kind of status as a washing machine or a trousers press. This new ruling would finally recognize women as fully fledged mammals right up there with a camel or a goat, which is disgusting. Women in Saudi Arabia equals of a goat? <sighs> we all know goats are the best. Goats are le on level with men in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> I'm going to get killed, aren't I? I'm going to be killed in a local embassy by, uh, by Saudi Arabian goons, aren't I? Not even joking. <laughs> ah, Saudi Arabia, you're so scary. Take me, sweet dad! But the scientists also stressed that women were still considered to be devoid of souls. <laughs> Saudi Arabia? No, I know it's made up, but it's sort of believable, isn't it? Because it's Saudi Arabia. 
<laughs> the article was published to tie in with Women's Day, and despite it being a blatant spoof, it quickly gathered traction on social media, where it generated a strong reaction in hundreds of thousands of shares. It was even picked up and reported as fact by other media platforms. The reaction appeared to be divided into two distinct camps. One camp was incensed the women were still classed as soulless mammals, whilst the other camp... I mean, I'm a soulless mammal. I'm a mammal. Do I believe in souls? No, I'm a soulless mammal. So are you. Because souls aren't real. And you're a mammal. I think. Probably. Mammals are... Yes. Whilst the other camp hailed such a historic milestone in which women were finally getting the same rights as a f***ing koala bear. But maybe the truth isn't quite so removed from fiction as you may think. Saudi Arabia has recently unveiled new women's rights reforms, although the general consensus is that they're still light years away from seeing any genuine equality. And at the same time the spoof article was published in 2016, women were generally regarded as legal minors rather than property. Without the s still though, that's f***ing crazy. Still, the, the fact, I know it's, I know it's less crazy than the fake story, but it's still crazy. Without the consent of a male guardian, women were unable to travel, start a business, vote, get married, receive medical treatment, open a bank account, or drive a f***ing car. I think that changed. I think they can now drive cars, which, I mean, it literally reads like it's from the World News Daily Report or the f***ing Onion, doesn't it? Because... It's insane. It was just like, Simon, you're such a feminist. You're such a feminist. You're always standing up for women's rights. Why are you so woke? Because <laughs> in this case, I mean, Jesus Christ, Saudi Arabia. Woo! Sh but I'm hoping this new law doesn't apply to all mammals. Those road hogging honey badgers are notoriously terrible drivers. Pizzagate. You know that a slice of fake news has got a little out of hand when it leads to a gunman walking into a pizza restaurant in Washington, D.C. with an AR-15 assault rifle. He's under the utterly misguided notion that the pizzeria and ping-pong bar is operating a satanic pedophile ring involving the most high-profile figures in the Democratic Party, including Hillary Clinton. This was f mental. Pizzagate is just like, how did that become a thing? Because it's obviously just, just f mental, isn't it? Just when you think about it, it's just, just... Who would believe this nonsense? What are you fucking stupid? <laughs> the restaurant in question was called Comet Ping Pong, and during the 2016 presidential election, it was a regular haunt of Hillary Clinton campaign chairman Joe Podesta. Sorry, John Podesta. Just re misread that. Totally misread it. My bad. I'm not sure if he went there for ping pong or the pizza, but we do know that he definitely visited regularly thanks to a bunch of his private emails that were released into the wild by whistleblowing site WikiLeaks. And it didn't take long for the communities of 4chan and Reddit to crack the secret code in those emails, which would reveal the true horrific nature of what really went down in the basement of comic ping pong. Now, I initially assumed that there must have been at least a shred of twisted logic to the subsequent claims that the pizzeria was the secret secret base for a human trafficking and child sex abuse ring. Yeah, I mean, you'd think, right? You'd think that conspiracy theories have to start from somewhere, but they don't. And that, they're, they're just crazy. It's just, there's, you just need like one crazy person who recruits a few other crazy people. And look, there's a lot, this is the problem with the internet. There's so many people. There's so many people that there's going to be lots of crazy people too. And they get together and then they believe things. I, I recently heard of the, the, the conspiracy theory that birds aren't real. And then I found out that it's a fake conspiracy theory. And I enjoyed that greatly. But no, I was dead wrong. But no, I was dead wrong. The online communities just seem to arrive at the conclusion that every reference to cheese pizza was code for child pornography, the two phrases sharing the same initials. They also claimed that the business logo contained symbols linked to Satanism and pedophilia. Spoiler alert, it did not. And the restaurant owner's Instagram feed was full of pictures of children. And it was on this flimsiest of concepts that the fake news grew like a virus. A pro-government media outlet in Turkey helped fan the flames on Twitter by introducing the hatch tag Pizzagate, largely to deflect attention away from a very real child abuse scandal within their own government-linked foundation. <laughs> oh, classic. Classic Turkey. God, I'm really upsetting all the countries that are going to murder me in embassies today, aren't I? <laughs> ah! <laughs> The hashtag was to appear in over a million tweets over the next month. Hundreds of thousands of users subscribed to truth groups and threads on Reddit. Even Michael Flynn Jr., a member of Trump's transition team and the son of Trump's national security advisor, tweeted his support for the conspiracy. Why has anyone listened to him? He's the son of someone who's so, sort of important. Why are we listening to him? Stop it! A uh, quote. Until Pizzagate is proven to be false, it'll remain a story, mate. 
That's not how it works. You have to prove something to be true. It's not the responsibility of the other people to prove something's false. It's not how it works. He was swiftly dismissed from the transition team. Oh, wait, he was actually on the transition team? Did he get his job because his dad was someone important? This is f up. Stop it with this cronyism. Uh, not cronyism. Kind of okay with cronyism. Uh, the, the, the nepotism. Thank you myself i'm thanking myself i don't know why more worryingly the restaurant's owner james alafantis and his staff began receiving regular death threats as protesters flocked outside of comet ping pong to demand answers the answers were refreshingly simple there was never a scrap of evidence to support the mad theory the instagram pictures were of james's children and godchildren playing together and james had a pretty convincing response to the allegation that the pedophile ring was run from the restaurant's basement i know what this is the restaurant didn't have a basement did it danny it didn't quote we don't even have a basement he told reporters things <laughs> so good things reached ahead when 28 year old edgar madison welch apparently a gentle and soft-spoken man marched into comet ping pong with the rifle and fired three shots into the busy family friendly restaurant he was attempting to heroically rescue the children still trapped in that non-existent basement ironically during his car journey to the pizza joint he had accidentally knocked down a teenage pedestrian thankfully nobody else was injured during the incident itself and welch was sentenced to four years in jail i kind of feel that's a bit harsh because he was trying to be a hero he was just suckered in butts by some conspiracy theories trying to save lives <laughs> and he's obviously just a bit dim or something or just like my my uh unnamed person in my close family is a bright guy smart guy but he believes in all this cr crazy conspiracy theory stuff he really does he just gets sucked into it and i'm just like that's d dude <laughs> it's a, and it's like i feel bad for this guy going to prison he's trying to be a hero even though he's insane what an idiot oh what a loser but pizzagate never really went away it's now considered to be the predecessor to the QAnon movement but even the original fake news is still believed to be entirely genuine as recently as 2019 comet ping pong was the target of an arson attack by a QAnon nutter it seems as if those ancient fires of fake news may continue to burn for a few thousand more years before we, we truly wise up to the menace of this information but on a slightly more uplifting note, I've permitted to donate 100% of my fee for this script to the families of the victim of the Bowling Green Massacre. We'll never forget. <laughs> this has been an episode of Brain Blaze. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, smash that like button. Make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you next time. Subscribing fake and alternative facts might be another way of creating. <laughs>